Hi, and thanks again for tuning in to the Texas Flycaster video channel. This channel goes with www.texasflycaster.com. That's a website I created back in 2007. Loaded with information and photographs about travels and technicalities on fly fishing in Texas. Thanks for tuning in. Please leave a comment or subscribe. Hi, and thanks for tuning in to this week's Texas Fly Fishing Report. My name is Shannon. If you've never been here before, I've been doing these reports for quite a while. And what I do is I take information that I glean from everywhere, all my sources, um, and try to uh, translate that, it's usually fishing information, try to translate that into fly fishing information for Texas. And we're in a unique situation right now here as it usually is for fly fishers in texas something's always always different about it making texas a one-of-a-kind fly fishing place uh, this week signifies the beginning of the school year starting again for public schools and that means that uh, the lakes will be getting less crowded and that means that uh, the pressure will start to come off of the places we like to go which is really a, a good time also, though, at the same time, we seem to be in kind of a, uh, a doldrum again. Uh, these can last a few, a week, two weeks, a month. But uh, the doldrums are those things that we get here on the front end and back end of seasons that uh, make it kind of difficult. Nothing's super turned on. It's super hot right now. Uh, the weather pattern here in North Texas, where I live, I'm in Denton, Texas, is uh, very unpredictable. We've got uh, extreme clouds today, super high humidity. It's not even that hot, but the humidity is so high that it makes it really, really hard to be outside for long. And this week I, I went out twice and got skunked twice, so I'll, I'll always admit that there are times when when I can get out and do my best and, and virtually catch nothing. That's why they call it fishing and not catching. But what I did this week is I went to one specific location that was referred to last week on the Texas Insider, last weekend, last Saturday morning, on the Texas Insider Fishing Report. I think it's on Fox Sports Southwest or something like that. And that's Lake Grapevine. And of course, what they're doing is they're giving information for a, a, a traditional fisherman on a bass boat usually and, and bass boating fishing techniques to uh, catch bass um, and I translated that into fly fishing my techniques and that and there was nothing going on so there that is a perfect case of a, a guide in North Texas who was interviewed maybe he did this or maybe he heard this maybe it was accurate when he reported the information but by the time I got there on Tuesday, I'll take that back, uh, Wednesday, it was not as a no-go. And so that happens, you know, it may just be me, but I, I saw other people fishing and not catching anything as well, ran all over that lake, I mean, ran all over Lake Grapevine. And uh, what I believe is that if you've got bass activity, the other fish activity matches that pretty well as far as you're going to see carp moving around, you're going to see other kinds of fish moving around, gar, whatever you're after. Um, based on a bass, because the bass seems to be the canary in the coal mine in my opinion, as far as a fish that's highly susceptible to all kinds of changes in conditions and stuff like that, whereas carp are a lot less susceptible to, cha to changes in temperatures and, and conditions and things like that. So that's my opinion. On a local basis, I've been chasing these largemouth bass. I call them LMBs in areas around around on on Ray Roberts Lake. That's north of me here, in, north of Denton, Texas. And what it is is there's these islands, and then there's these areas that extend out from the islands like sandbars, but they're just you know slopes off of these hilltops really because it's a man-made lake. And the the bass, I'm chasing carp, so I'm using carp flies, and then suddenly bass start showing up and chasing my fly but the flies are so small I can I can cast on them from the cast from the polling platform and see them flare their flare like that on it but the fly is so small it, it just doesn't it doesn't take so 
I'm working on my fly selection. Hopefully we'll have some video of me catching some of those bass in the near future. Uh, I think the weather, because of the overcast and things like that, helps a lot to keep the temperature, water temperature down, those shallow passovers like that. And what you're looking for, you can do this on a kayak, and there's carp there uh, as well, but I, not, just not a whole lot right now. Uh, what you can do on those passovers like that, those little extended sandbars, you can get there by kayak and hop off and wade fish it. You can, you can, there's a, you can almost walk to these, some of these in their locations, and then all you have to do is just have your, your mind zeroed in on, on greenies instead of on, on uh, carp or have yourself ready with two poles two rods that is with uh, one with uh, a uh, bass fly on it and one with a carp fly so you, it's kind of a juggling act but that is pretty exciting to actually sight cast for bass that are running in the two to four or five pound range other than that the other all I see is slow uh, on the Texas scroll you'll see that at the end of the, of the broadcast the Texas scroll um, I see slow and uh, and that's about it. So most of the, the state is in slow phase right now. Of course, the the slowness is based on bass, and like I said, bass are the canary in the coal mine, in my opinion. On the Texas Gulf Coast, it's slowed down as well. Usually, that's corresponding to tides, which makes sense uh, right now. With one exception, there's one exception in freshwater and one exception in saltwater. Rollover pass and salt water on the Bolivar Peninsula is showing uh, very good, I believe it is, or good, which is, which is better than most uh, on the Texas coast right now. The other extreme is, is south, South Padre Island, and, and still at the cut at Mansfield. Those are still good, but the BP, Bolivar Peninsula, and Rollover Pass, that's what you want to go to and they are catching on the outgoing tide on mirror lures, which mirror lure, if I ever fish conventionally in, in salt water, or if I'm taking a fly rod and it's too windy, I'll throw mirror lures all day long because this was my first lure that I ever caught a speckled trout on as a kid. And so I've got very partial and have a huge, huge inventory of mirror lures. But um, other than that, you know, you can translate a mirror lure into a, a huge, uh, Clouser, if you want, be sure to go with gold as far as your, your flashing. The other place, fresh water, that I uh, is close by, close by to the, to the, the BP and, and the Rollover Pass is, uh, is actually Houston County Lake, I think it's called. It's in Houston area and it's County Lake. I've seen it, I've been around it, never had a boat on it and the bass fishing there says very good which is that's black bass and so what that tells me is that lake is, is kind of stimulated right now and something's going on there so you might want to have a look at that if you're in the area of Houston I've got a lot of Houston subscribers and a lot of people go to the website www.texasflycaster.com that's where you want to go if you want to get more information and more details about fly fishing in Texas culture um, gear um, I'm way into music and slightly into beer and, uh, and the beer scene and so uh, definitely not in the cigar scene anymore but uh, check that out check out Texas Flycaster and have a great uh, beginning of fall really I guess it symbolizes when uh, when the uh, school zones are in effect and kids are back in school it's a great time because it's really not the end of summer but uh, we've got all these kids out of our water now and all their parents and they're having to go back to the grind. So we've got to take advantage of that. I am also, also always looking for someone, you know, to report to me on the locations that you're at. If you're watching from South Padre Island, if you're watching from Galveston, if you're watching from Houston, if you're watching from the Hill Country, if you got something to say, we can, we can do a phone call and I can definitely um, record that and we can play that back and so that you as a guide if you're a guide even more so you can report to me and I can report your information to them to you guys I should say the uh, people who watch the YouTube channel but never forget www.texasflycaster.com thanks for watching here comes the scroll have a great weekend and enjoy the rest of August
Thanks for surviving another Texas Flycaster video. As you know, this is supplementary to www.texasflycaster.com. You can find a lot more information there, and you can also book me for guiding services if you want. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the water.